12. And that maps to that physical block of 512k. But it can grow up to 2 gigabytes. Now, how do we decide when that VM requires more memory? Remember, I can't just say, well, it's using all its memory, let's give it some more. Think back to the issue. Windows 7 is never going to show you a free count of anything significant. It's going to use it for caching. So what Hyper-V does, it actually has a new enlightenment that runs as part of the integration services that monitors exactly how memory is being used within the VM. And if it sees that the memory is all in use, but the available memory is above a certain threshold which we can configure, say 20%, then it's not going to give it any more memory. But if that available memory shrinks below what we configure, the threshold value, it says, okay, this VM could actually use some more memory. And what it does is it looks at, well, do I have more memory physically available? It's not going to overcommit. It's not going to say, yep, yeah, here's some more memory if it doesn't physically have it available. But if it does have it physically available, it's going to say, okay, you're really low on memory. Processors are using all the RAM. Here's an extra block of 256 megs of memory. And again, that's going to map through 256 in physical RAM. Like I say, I've got other VMs over here, 512, 512, etc., using all the memory up. And again, it's watching all of them. And it's saying, hey, look, this guy is running out of memory as well. I've got some memory spare over here. Sure, you can have a new upper 256. And this memory actually maps to this block over here. So it's assigning memory based on what's available. When it doesn't need it anymore, let's say the memory pressure has gone down, maybe that app's closed, it can claim the memory back and leave it available to another VM. So this memory can grow and shrink based on what the VM actually needs. So it's not just blindly giving it a large number of memory and hope it's not going to use it all. It says, here's an initial amount. I'm going to watch how you're using it. If you need more, for actual processes, and if it's physically available in RAM, here's some more memory. Now you don't need it anymore, I'm going to claim it back. Now, how do we claim it back? Basically, we have something called a balloon driver. Because currently in SP1, we can't take memory out of an operating system. Uh, the way it turned out, operating systems are very happy if you just say, here's some more memory. It says, oh, great. You like give candy to a kid. He's not going to question why he's got candy. It's like, mm, candy. Windows appears to be the same thing. Here's more memory. Memory. And it starts using it. If we just try to take that memory away, same as like taking candy for the child, it's going to start kicking and screaming and fall on the floor. So what actually happens inside the OS is we have a balloon driver. Uh, it's a kernel mode mini device driver. And what that means is, if that driver says, hey, I need memory, that guest OS has to give it that memory. It has to allocate the amount it's asking for. So sort of, if that is that memory here, and it's now not using it, it's got a lot available, it just doesn't need that memory anymore, this balloon driver is going to inflate. And it's going to say, hey, I want 256 megs of RAM, please. And the guest operating system will see the request from that driver and say, oh, okay, this guy needs 256 megs of RAM. It's going to say, I've got all this stuff just being cached that I don't need anymore. Okay, I'll chuck that out of cache and allocate the memory to this balloon driver. So it's effectively shrunk the memory it's using for processes and applications. Well, this balloon driver is only being used by the Hyper-V integration services, that enlightenment. So once the balloon driver has been allocated at 256 megs of RAM, it says, OK, hypervisor, this is the memory I was given. You don't need to allocate any physical RAM anymore because I'm never going to use it. And the OS can't. And that's how we claim it back. If the OS needs more memory again, it can deflate the driver, that balloon, give the memory back, and reallocate a portion of memory to it. So you can see it can shrink and grow, shrink and grow. But the key thing is, it's intelligent. It's looking at how the memory is being used within the guest. And only if it's actually going to be useful for processes and applications are we going to give it any more memory. We can claim it back through the balloon driver. And we're not going to overcommit ourselves. We're only going to give memory if it's physically available. We're not going to actually cause performance problems. Now, I talked before about a, a buffer amount. Well, we actually set how much available memory we want that VM to have. So by default, it's 20%. I can change it to be 30% or 10%, whatever I want to do. Um, I can also set priorities. So if this box is really running hard, 
it's using up all the memory, I can say, well, this VM is more important. So in the case of a, a clash scenario, this VM should be given more memory over this VM. And so if you think there's a lot of places where this is amazing, I mean, BDI environments, been able to have lots more virtual machines running on a single box, and they're given more memory when needed, but I get a far higher VM density. Some server services are going to work great on this as well. So this is what we have, and this is what's coming in SP1. Uh, it is a really cool technology. Obviously, it's intelligent. We're going to get really high densities. Uh, you still need to do proper planning. Don't just think, well, I'll chuck everything on one box. Uh, dynamic memory will take care of it. You still need to work out where those peaks of memory usage are and, and plan your placement accordingly. But uh, definitely take a look. It's, it's a great technology. Thank you.